Should you pay for GitHub Copilot? I really don't know if I can answer that for you, but I'm gonna try. What's going on everyone? Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is James Q. Quick and I do weekly videos about web development related topics. I do a lot with VS Code and I've done a lot with tools and extensions and configurations and setups. You can go and scroll through videos if you want to inside of VS Code. And there's one extension that I was particularly excited about in the last year. I actually did a video on GitHub Copilot before I tried it out where I uh, expressed my skepticism of how good it could be. And I gotta tell you, I was 100% wrong. GitHub Copilot is better than I ever imagined, like so much better than I ever imagined to the point that I have to not use it because I record so much content that I was tired of turning on and off GitHub Copilot because it was doing all of my work for me in tutorials and I couldn't explain what was going on as quick as it would write code for me. So for that reason, I turned it off and I just don't use it right now, but only literally because it's too good. So the question is, should you actually pay for GitHub Copilot? And make sure that you stick around until the end because I'll show you a little hack to have somebody else pay for GitHub Copilot for you so you don't have to. If you haven't used GitHub Copilot before, basically what it is is an extension that you can add inside of VS Code and other editors for other scenarios. But in this case, we'll talk about VS Code. And it will give you like really, really cool, like mind blowing IntelliSense for the code that you want to write. So a couple of examples. If you write a comment and inside of your comment, say, I want to iterate through a loop, for example, it will go and kind of auto suggest code that will iterate through that loop. It can do things like work with the Twitter API or create a react component or like literally whatever it was that I was trying to do, it would do for me. And it was so mind blowing. So it's absolutely worth people checking out. And in the past year, I think it has been in kind of a preview stage of you had to get access to, to use GitHub Copilot before it was kind of officially released. And now as of the a couple of days ago, as of recording this, it is officially released and uh, now it's going to be a paid product. So the early release was free. Now it's paid. And the question is, should you actually pay for GitHub Copilot? So there's a couple of cool notes in here. Uh, I'll have some resources for articles that you can go and look at uh, in the description below. So you can go and uh, look at those. But a couple of cool stats. Uh, in the last year, more than 1.2 million developers signed up for the GitHub Copilot preview. Now that to me is really, really wild. Obviously Microsoft, GitHub, VS Code, all this is like such a hu super huge ecosystem. It kind of makes sense that you get so many developers on board, but I think they only got so many people on board because of how good the product was. Like everyone that I talked to was like, dude, you got to try out GitHub Copilot. It's amazing. And I did, and they were 100% right. So 1.2 million people signed up for the preview, which was free in the last year. Another quote, now this is uh, according to GitHub from an article that's linked below. Uh, GitHub says that nearly 40% of code is now being written by Copilot in files where Copilot is turned on. That is wild. 40% of the code that we write in a file that GitHub Copilot is being used is really, really wild. That's a high percentage of code. So if you think about from your perspective of writing code, creating new things, that's a big help that you can get from GitHub Copilot. Now, always my concern has been, what if Copilot doesn't do exactly what you want? It's close. The amount of time that you spend fixing what it does or what it gives you, does that really save you time versus just writing that thing yourself? And I think there's a couple of like optimal situations for this. If you're working on something where you just don't know right offhand how to do it, GitHub Copilot is a great start. It's like basically the equivalent of like, intelligently searching Stack Overflow, finding the solution that you're looking for and copying and pasting it. Sure, there may be some things that you would have to change yourself, but to have it right there done for you in a second or like less than a second is really, really mind blowing, especially when you compare going out and doing the research, fumbling through Stack Overflow, et cetera, and then copying that in and then still having to make some changes. So for things that you don't necessarily know how to do, I think that's a great use case. Now on the flip side for things you do know how to do, but maybe you're just tedious. I think you get a lot of help out of there as well because you can be more opinionated on what solution you're looking for. So you can scroll through the different solutions that GitHub Copilot offers you and choose the right one. So if you're more knowledgeable about that thing, now your speed to choosing that thing is a little bit better. Anyway, high percentage of code that it's writing for people, 1.2 million developers over the last year. And now it is officially released. Uh, it's out of its free technical trial. And now they're on to a $10 a month plan. 
So uh, one interesting fact as well. So in terms of should you pay for this, this is going to remain free for verified students and maintainers of popular open source projects. So if you fall into either one of those categories, definitely take advantage of the fact that GitHub Copilot will still be free for you. But the question that we've been waiting for, should you pay $10 a month for GitHub Copilot also comes down to $100 a year. So there's a couple different takes on this. And the answer, it depends, is to me the most valid answer for everything. Because if you ask me a question, I definitively say yes or no. I'm probably missing some perspective. So I'm going to give you a couple of different scenarios where I think it makes sense and doesn't and go from there. If you are a brand new developer um, and you're learning JavaScript, for example, I don't think you should enable Copilot. I think it is in that phase of your learning journey. I think it is a learning crutch. I think you're going to sacrifice your learning journey by using GitHub Copilot, depending on that too much and not understanding what it's doing for you. So I would say if you're a really early stage career, I would not use Git Co GitHub Copilot until you feel like you're fairly intermediately experienced with the language or framework or tool that you're using and that GitHub Copilot would be writing code for you for. So I would avoid it in that scenario. Now, entry level and like learning early learning journey developers aside let's move into like intermediate developers experienced developers is this going to be worth you paying for it so i am in a situation personally where ten dollars a month is something i can easily do i still have to gauge how many of these ten dollar fifteen dollar a month services that i pay for because after a while it builds up and one of my pet peeves is paying for something on a monthly basis because i feel like if I can afford it right now, I'd rather pay for it and then not have like recurring bills on my um, in my expenses on a monthly basis. So I prefer to pay up front. You also uh, save a little bit of money with one hundred dollars versus ten dollars a month, which would end up being one hundred and twenty dollars. So I personally, if I was not recording YouTube videos, if I um, if I was just using GitHub Copilot for the stuff I was working on and it didn't interfere with content creation, I would pay for it. The amount of uh, assistance that it provided me really just blow, blew my mind. Um, the good thing to note, if you haven't tried GitHub Copilot yet, there's a 60 day free trial for you to go out there and see for yourself what the impact is that it has for you on the code that you write. So go out and try that yourself. Now, if you're short on uh, dispensable, dispensable income, is that the right word? Disposable income, not dispensable income. If you're short on disposable income, I don't think this is something you need to go out of your way to pay for. Uh, this is obviously an assistance tool. It can help do stuff for you. As developers, we can do all this stuff ourselves. We can go to Stack Overflow. We can go to SDKs. We can go to Docs. We can figure it out all ourselves. So if you have kind of the least bit of concern of committing to $10 a month or paying $100 up front, I don't think it's something that you really, really need to push for. But if you're comfortable with the money, I do think it's definitely worth the value and I would go ahead and invest it. Like I said, hands down for me, if I was not having trouble with GitHub Copilot while I'm recording content, which is a lot of what I do, I would absolutely pay for it. So there's my general take. I would pay for it myself. If you're early in your learning journey, I would not use GitHub Copilot because I think it becomes a crutch and sacrifices your learning journey. If you're intermediate and beyond, uh, definitely try out the free trial if you haven't already. Pay for it if that's not a concern for you. If you have the disposable income to pay for that on a monthly basis or up front, go ahead and do that. And here's the last trick. Have your work pay for this. This is something that I have done over and over again in my career. Your work should support you in uh, trainings and learnings and tools, all these things. And this is a perfect use case to ask your work or employer to pay for this. You can explain to them the amount of time that it saves for you on a weekly basis, uh, and then compare that to your, if your salary, like break down an hourly rate of $40 an hour or whatever it is, like break that down and translate that into dollars. And if you save 20 hours in a year of work by using GitHub Copilot, 20 times 40 is $800, is that right? $800? I don't like to do math live on a video. But $800 uh, is the amount of time that it will save you or the equivalent amount of money for the time it will save you, which is obviously much less than 100. So ask your employers to do this for you because that is something I believe they should support you in. So if you're not comfortable paying for it, ask your employer, see what happens. Anyways, I'm curious what people will think. And if you're planning on paying for GitHub Copilot, let me know. Start the discussion in the comments below. I really want to hear your perspectives. Anything I missed, anything you want to add, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope you enjoy GitHub Copilot if you give it a shot and I'll catch you in the next one.